Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Noreen, and I've been invited to share some thoughts with you this afternoon on the theme of working together for a better world as part of this Novena's theme, Caring for Creation. And in the couple of days before I was here, I was lucky enough to be above in Donegal. And two days ago, I visited Lenvey, and it poured rain. We had to get the bus up and down. It was so rainy. But we went out into the gardens, and I was in the midst of worrying about what I'd say here, and would I say the right thing, and would it be good enough? And in the middle of the rain and the clouds, and we had our hats down over our heads, in this beautiful little garden in Lenvey, I saw lilies. Big, huge, white, beautiful lilies. They were held up by bamboo uh, because they were, they were so delicate. But yet here they were blossoming, absolutely impossibly almost, gorgeous, bright colours. And I heard the gospel. See the lilies of the field. See how God takes care of them. And because I was present, and because I was really just present to those lilies and thinking, isn't this amazing? Isn't this beautiful? I heard that scripture from my heart, and I heard God say to me, Noreen, I'll take care of the people of Knock. Just do your best. And for me, it was a great solidarity and an affirmation of being here today, because what God invites us into is not to worry or stress, not to say, how can we possibly begin to care for this world, but instead into something that is a spiritual conversion, a deepened relationship with God, which is going to help us to create a better world, yes, but also to come closer to God, also to look and see God present with us. So very briefly this afternoon, I'm going to say a word about how we might work with God and how we might work together with God. And I'd hope that at some point you'll hear a phrase or a thought that will resonate in your heart and you can take home. That's God's job. I'll share these few thoughts. First, I'll say that I'll mention Laudato Si as I speak, and for some, that's a new name. In 2015, Pope Francis wrote a letter to you. Your Pope wrote you a letter. He didn't just write it to activists or environmentalists, he wrote it to you. And he asked that every person on the earth would read it, and he talked about how we're becoming aware that there's an issue around how we care for the world we live in. And he said, but our goal isn't just to be aware of that or to figure out how to fix it. We need to enter into this and become painfully aware, to dare to turn to what's happening in the world and see it. So that in seeing and engaging and feeling the pain the world is in, we begin to see where God is calling us. So let's start with this idea of a better world. Why was Pope Francis worried? We live in a beautiful world, especially on a lovely day like this, surrounded by these stunning flowers here in the church, and outside the trees, the leaves shimmering, the lilies shaking. We can see this gorgeous world and just be so aware of how creative and wonderful our God is to allow so much, to have so much beauty in the world. We also live in a time where we can't ignore the devastation anymore. In 1980, the Environmental Protection Agency told us we had 500 pristine rivers in Ireland. We had 500 rivers that your children could swim in, that you could drink the water, that you could eat the fish. Now we have 20, 500 to 20. I could list all the different things about the wet months and the hottest months and the disasters, but you know them. This isn't just about weather changing anymore. Something is happening that our church is trying to make us aware of. And these things impact on people's ability to feed themselves, to live safely, to travel to work. It's why we have surpassed 100 million refugees in the world in the last while. And there is a call for a Christian response to that. A Christian response to the young people who say, what world are you giving us? What world are you leaving us? And sometimes we can be like the Gentiles in the gospel who worry and who try and store up and avoid and fall into despair. But this isn't God's plan. When we speak of these things, we are not speaking of stress and worry and more lists and tasks to add. Instead, Pope Francis is really clear in Laudato Si 
that the roots of this ecological crisis are deeply spiritual. He says, we have forgotten who we are and where we come from. We are so busy, we are so preoccupied with being successful, with minding everyone, with trying to get ahead. We're worried about Halloween pumpkins and Christmas lists in September. We are not present to God. We are not present to our lives. We are not present to the fact that God is with us in the world. And he invites us to stop, to pay attention, to notice what is happening, to listen to our earth, to listen to our poor so that we might hear what God is saying and work with God to build a better world. So the place we begin is not a place of lists or tasks, but something that I'm sure many of you are already doing. The first invitation that Pope Francis gives is that we would step out and notice God present in all things. Now, we have an advantage in Ireland. We are a people steeped in the language that God comes to us all the time, disguised as strangers, that hospitality is sacred. In fact, Douglas Hyde wrote, the Irish people see the hand of God in every place and every time and in everything. They have this sense of life being embraced on all sides by God. Dialath, Dialath and Uber, God be with you. God bless all here. God bless this house all the time recognizing God present and at the heart of everything. So my invitation for you today, the first thing, if we want to make a better world with God, is that we would consciously choose to spend 15 minutes a day outside in the world God made. Could you take 15 minutes in the day and say, I'm going to go beyond my house, my car, my phone, my radio, all the machine noises, and I'm going to be present to God in the world. That might mean opening a window or putting a chair in the garden, but you might drive to someplace beautiful or go for a walk, but not with prayer, not with noise, not with you talking to God, but rather simply saying, I will be present for 10 minutes today to the beautiful world God has made and to how God is speaking to me in the world. I might sit with the same tree in my garden for 10 minutes every day. There's 50,000 leaves on that tree probably. There's plenty happening. I might sit and watch children at play. I might close my eyes and listen to the sounds of the world when there's no machines. And in staying in that quiet and giving that time to God, I might then after 10 minutes finish with a prayer which could well be, Lord, I'm not sure what you did with that 10 minutes, but I thank you for it. Amen. Or could be, Lord, I don't know how to take care of this world. Will you mind my grandchildren? Amen. Or Lord, thank you for the chance to be still and to notice you at work in the unfurling of a leaf. Amen. When we enter into such real moments of the heart, we can begin to see the risen Christ present in all of creation to see the fingerprints of God in the forests and the wildflower, in a blade of grass, in the sea. Again, Laudata Si says, the entire material universe speaks of God's love, of God's boundless affection for us. Soil, water, mountains, everything is, as it were, a caress of God. So we are invited to see God wherever life pours ordinary plenty. We are invited with Our Lady, to look towards her son that she points to and to respond to the invitation, do whatever he tells you. We do this not in a hopeful, wishful way, but in active hope, conscious and knowing that God is already at present in the world, is already at work in the world, present. Conscious that just as in the creation story we heard, The Holy Spirit hovering over the water is at the heart of everything, already blessing everything, already healing our world, but we are asked to cooperate. God's presence makes all of creation holy, and so creation can teach us of God. Just as no piece of scripture returns to God without touching hearts, so the creation of our world, all the pieces of our world, teaches us of God. Lastly, I want to say that if we try and do this alone, it can be frightening. If we try and say we want a better world, but there are so many problems, what can we do? We can be like the lily. We can be shaking and saying, I don't know what I have to offer, but can you see already how God used lilies? Can you see already how God might use us? 
So the invitation is not to try and do things on our own, but rather to gather together. So at events like this novena, to take time to reflect, to go to the workshops, to see things that are happening here, that teach us and help us to grow in our prayer, to help us to come closer to God. Here are some practical ideas that have been given across Ireland and that there's lots of resources to support you in. First, take that time every day. Consciously take 10 minutes every day to be present in the world with God. It's harder than you think, but it will change your life. Secondly, try and learn or read a little bit about Laudato Si, or if you think, I don't know if I could read a Pope's letter, you might find a reading club or a book, group, book, book club or a reading group in which you could explore Laudato Si. We have some in the centre I work in. I know there's plenty in Dublin and different parts of the country. Since 2015, September is set aside by our church as a season of creation. Another thing you could do is say, in our parish, can we use the resources we're given to pray and to speak about how we are called to care for God, to come close to God through the whole world? Can we use the prayers? Can we use the liturgy? Can we use the resources that we're given? And our bishops this year have asked us that by 2030, that every parish would give back 30% of its land to biodiversity. That's a big ask. Nobody is tearing up a car park, but the invitation might be to sit down and to say, we have a lot of walls on churches, on graveyards that have moss and lichen, and we will choose not to put any chemicals on them. So we're allowing them to return, this part of our land, to return to nature. This is work with God for a better world. This is doing God's work. And there are lots of resources and support online and in person who will come to your community, who will help you with this. And if this moves your heart, I invite you not only to think of what can we do in our parish, that's important, but also how can we in our parish cooperate with the tidy towns and the eco groups and all of those who are about the same goal. But we can bring our hope as Christians, knowing that God is already at work, and we can share that with the world. Finally, can I ask you to pray daily for the healing of our world and that local and world leaders would have the courage to make the urgent decisions needed to care more deeply for our creation. We might shake like lilies, but we can make an impact. Because to finish, Pope Francis said, all is not lost. Human beings, while capable of the worst, are also capable of rising above themselves and choosing again what is good and making a new start. I appeal to everyone throughout the world not to forget this dignity which is ours. Let us sing as we go, he says. Truly much can be done. Alleluia. Amen.